Good morning. I'm Judy. If you don't know who I am, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you have joined me. Um, I just wanted to stop and just tell you a little about, bit about me in case you don't know who I am. I am fixing to be 52 years old and my life totally changed four years ago. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a farm girl. I'm a total city girl. Grew up in the city. Never thought of having a farm a day in my life. But four years ago, my husband suggested us getting chickens and my life totally changed. And from that, I'm a petting zoo. <laughs> and how did all that get started? That's for another day. But, um, yesterday, if you've been following my story, um, I have a part one and a part two to a little bit of rabbit drama. Um, I lost my kids um, on Sunday. No, Saturday. No, Monday. I lost um, a set of kids. And uh, sometimes, you know, as a farm person, you have to you have to make tough decisions, and a lot of uh, things happen constantly and you always have to have your eyes open and your ears open to look for anything that could be going on in your farm area, whether it be a predator or a sickness or someone separating themselves. Like you always have to be on top of your game when you have a farm. Well, yesterday there's a part three to my rabbits. So I hope you enjoy. Sometimes you just have to go with your gut feeling. So I got home today and I don't know if it's just the mother instinct in me, but something told me to get the rabbit and go to the vet. Um, so I am headed to Dr. Lee's office to do an ultrasound to see if there is more kits in there. I'm concerned because she hasn't ate her rabbit feed and then that happened with the kits. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I do not have animals not to take care of them. My heart and soul is to taking care of these animals and I will do whatever it takes to provide for them. And today is one of those days that I'm going with my mother instincts and I'm taking the vet, the rabbit to the vet. So <clears throat> let's talk about vets and having a farm. <sighs> vets are your best friend when you have a farm your best friend and you have to have a really close relationship with your vets because there's times when you're messaging on the weekends when they're off and you need them terribly and there's times when you walk out to the farm and there's a foot hanging out of your alpaca and you're like oh my gosh what do I do and he's walking you through the steps on how to deliver a baby alpaca these are things that are super important when having a farm. And as a matter of fact, I have two vets. I have Dr. Harney, is Harney Veterinarian Services, and he is a travel vet. So he doesn't have an office. It is fantastic because he has been able to castrate my pig, my alpaca, my goat, what else does he catch? My donkey right in the middle of my barn. And it's been fantastic. I have not had to take them off the property. But there's times when I have a rabbit that I don't have time to wait till Friday to see if she's okay. And I need to scoop her up and take her down the street to the vet. And that's where Dr. Lee comes into play is he's able to provide me um, veterinarian services when I need a quick turnaround. So I'm here at Dr. Lee's office. 
I just called and they're gonna do an ultrasound of her to see if there's any kits in her and they're gonna check to see if she's got anything else going on so I'm very thankful that I decided to bring her in because it'll make me feel better because I would just feel terrible if something happened to her and she was sick um, the last time she had kits she had six or eight I can't remember and she did great so she's been a mom before she's never had any issues so I do believe that something's going on and I feel like I'm at the best place I could be right now we're at the vet now waiting for the vet to come here to see what they say about my sweet baby girl so hopefully he'll give me some good news God gives us mothers the instinct to know when something's wrong. And I'm so glad that I went with my gut feeling. So I went to Dr. Lee and um, she has a urine infection. And he is certain that she aborted the babies. And I will say that yesterday when the babies were born, their face, now that I think about it, the face wasn't fully deformed. I mean, uh, fully formed. Uh, now that I think about it so he feels like that she aborted the babies because she was ill so he's given her an antibiotic and he gave her a dose of I can't remember the name of the medicine to make her feel better and she should be well on her way in the next 24 hours to be her fluffy little self I am exhausted <sighs> drove an hour to the schools today to donate books I did a tour I went and took the rabbit to the vet, and I'm beyond exhausted. But I, as I'm sitting here thinking about the rabbit, I wanted to add a little bit to what happened today with the vet. Um, I thought it was very unique because she has no milk. So he knows that she aborted the babies because there's no milk. And I thought, wow, I, I didn't even know that would exist. Um, but... She had a temperature, and so um, he gave her something to get her temperature down. And he does believe that she has a type of infection in her uterus. Um, so he did treat her with antibiotics, and there was definitely no more kits inside her. So she did abort the babies, and she's going to be fine. Um, I am glad to know that I did everything in my power to try to get Fluffy Mae to foster the babies. Um, I'm glad that I tried. And um, I don't think the babies were probably fully formed considering she had no milk. Um, so I don't think they would have made it even if Fluffy would have tried to nurse them. I don't think it would have happened. So, um learning lesson for Judy, learning lesson. Um, she, she, he said that she should be better in the next 24 hours. So I'm going to lay here and rest just a minute before I have to get up and fix supper. And, um, I'm excited to tell you about the duck rescue coming up. So today's Tuesday and, um, I woke up. The first thing I have done is Queso is my tortoise. There he is. And today is one of the first days that he's able to go outside because it's warm enough. It's supposed to get in the upper 70s today in Coleman. So he's going to get to play outside. And um, this is his water bowl. And I'm going to have to get his little summer get up together before, <laughs> before summer. But he has lived inside my house all winter because I don't know if you know, but tortoises, tortoises have to um, have heat during this uh, summer and we've yet to be able to get heat in our farm area. We had gotten an estimate from Coleman Electric. It is only about $15,000. So <laughs> anyway, so that's on the bucket list. Maybe we can do it one day, but it won't be today. So queso has been living inside my house. So I'm over here with her. She's 100% better. She has been nibbling on hay and she's hopping around, which she wasn't doing that. She was sitting still, but you can see 
I left her nesting box in there because I noticed that she likes it. Um, she was sleeping in it last night, so I'm gonna leave this nesting box in there for her, but she is 100% better, so I'm so thankful for Dr. Lee getting my baby better, and hopefully she'll be even better in a couple of days and back to herself. So this morning, I have to go to the library to read to the kids, and they're gonna be so excited because Peaches, which is one of my um, satin chickens, it's a bantam, um, is gonna go to the library with me, and I have a leash for her. She walks on a leash, and shout out to Riley for teaching me how to do that. And <laughs> um, so I'm gonna take her to the library on a leash and then be able to read to the kids. But first, what do we have to do? We have to go let the chickens out. That's a lot of chickens, isn't it? I have close to a hundred. <laughs> um, I love chickens. They're just so beautiful. And I love the different breeds and the variety. And I love colored eggs. And um, now it's time to go let the alpacas and the sheep out. Guys, a good baby.
tell me a secret? That you love your mommy? Mm -hmm. This is Bobby Joe. <laughs> Bobby Joe is our buck around here. He's gorgeous. He's very docile. He, um, he is spotted. <laughs> so he's so beautiful. And we have Hound Dog, the sheep. And we have the sheep over here. This is Johnny. So, oh, is my shirt good? <laughs> is my shirt good? Leroy! Leroy's in the back. There's Rio, the alpaca, boyfriend, the pig. So, we have a busy morning. And uh, I have to go get feed today. So, I'm going to be loading down my car with feed. The only feed that we use here at Sneed's Farmhouse is Kambach. Kambach is a feed company out of Ohio. If you've not tried their hen house reserve for their chickens, your chickens, you're missing out. You should try it. Um, <clears throat> it is wonderful. Filled with nutrition and vegetables and all kinds of good stuff. All right, it's time to go get my day started. I got kids waiting on me at the library. Mornings are so much fun coming out here and all the babies and all the animals are just full of love and excitement to see me. It's just a wonderful feeling. So today, um, I was gonna tell you guys that I'm gonna be rescuing a duck soon. Um, they called me on or messaged me on Sunday and this little Pekin duck lives at Wallace Community College, which is a college right here in Hansville that's by Coleman. And they had a big tournament. It was a basketball tournament. And the ducks got in the road and someone ran over the duck. And so anytime there's an injury at Wallace State with any of the animals, they put it, they send it to the biology department. And so this sweet biology teacher has been taking care of this duck for the past, I don't know, couple of weeks, I guess. And the duck's been taking a bath every night in her bathtub. So she's not really equipped with a farm area or rescue, but she's certain that this duck will not be able to go back to the lake there at Wallace because of his injury. It has a missing beak, a partial missing beak, and it has a hole where the car tire hit the duck. So it's coming to Sneeze Farmhouse to rehabilitate. Um, it'll probably live here full time, just depending. So yesterday, what are you doing? He wants loving. He, he's like a dog. He'll sit there and paw you if you don't pet him. <laughs> he's so funny. So anyway, yesterday when I took the rabbit to the vet, um, I talked to Dr. Lee about the duck and I showed him pictures of the duck um, and how that part of the beak is missing. And he began to inform me that the beak where it's missing will fill in. It will fix itself over time. So I'm super excited about that. The great news is the duck eats perfect with the, with, with the way it is. So she'll be able to, I hope it's a she, I'm pretty sure. She'll be able to live a normal life, even if her beak never repairs itself because she's eating great. So I'm very thankful to the biology department at Wallace for caring enough about the ducks to even take the time to rescue. And I'm very thankful that, do you ever feel like you have a, a goat back here that's pushing on you? Oh gosh, <laughs> so funny. I'm trying to video. <laughs> anyway, I'm very thankful to the biology department for trusting Sneed's farmhouse to be able to take the duck and give it a great home. So that should happen this week. So <sighs> subscribe to my page to be able to follow the duck story. And you know we have to give it a name. But first, Sweet Tate wanted to say hey. <laughs> 
Hey, Tater Bug. He's so sweet and he's he's becoming such a petting zoo alpaca. So I'm hoping that he'll turn his mother and father around to be a little bit more docile. needs farmhouse mobiles to the library and hope to make a difference in one child's life. <laughs>